we're speaking later today. Right. Um, what are some of the deep thoughts and insights you're going to share <laughs> with a very eager streaming media audience? Well, I'm on a panel, so obviously there'll uh, be lots of people sharing lots of fun and, and exciting things. But um, basically, I, you know, I'm I am thrilled about where this space is right now. You know, we're at a unique position, I think, in time, where content is basically saying that they want to get paid. Um, you have telcos who have networks who they want to utilize. You've got and they want to get paid. And they want to get paid. You have uh, MSOs and satellite who are trying to defend, you know, online uh, attacks, and so they're they're sitting there going, "We'd like to have an over-the-top solution." Um, and we at Move Networks have the unique capability to provide an end-to-end -end solution for all those folks. So we view it as, you know, we, we believe in monetization of video and we think that subscription and advertising combined are the right answer, that, that one without the other uh, doesn't really work. So our view is how do now, we... Now are you saying for any specific content company, one without the other doesn't work or just generally? Generally, you have to okay. have both solutions, right? And so from our perspective, we think the best solution is to create an exciting online opportunity that has subscription as well as advertising capability for the content owner and for the distribution partner. Okay, so, so you have tools for them to charge subscription monthly subscriptions and tools for them to monetize from an advertising standpoint. Yes, but not only that, we can actually... But wait, there's but more. But wait, um, the exciting part is that um, we believe that, you know, we provide an end-to-end -end solution that people will actually pay for. So in other words, if you could take... Uh, who's your who's your current uh, distribution? Who, who is your cable, DirecTV? Who do you have? You mean in terms of when I watch TV? Do you have a cable? Do you have a cable subscription or no. satellite subscription? I watch stuff online. Okay. I download stuff to my iPhone. Would um, you be excited if you had, I mean, would you pay a subscription fee if you had live and linear and bot and, and everything all rolled up into one? Into that one box? Into one, just one box. Into your computer, you could take it anywhere with okay, you. Okay, so you're saying would I pay a subscription for cross-platform access to everything I want? Exactly. Yes. All right, so you're the perfect customer for, okay. for our product. Um, we, we believe that, that the consumer would love to have a product that had everything that they love about cable or DirecTV or, or DISH or whomever today. They love about their satellite or cable provider, but they also love about being online so they have rich VOD capability and et cetera. And they would like social interaction with Twitter and Facebook and other, other social interactions. And if you could put all that together and deliver on the true three screen promise, we think that's what's really exciting. Now, just to be clear, do you do that in a direct to consumer model or do you do it in a B2B white label and you help other companies deliver that vision to their customers? Today we're doing it in the B2B white label okay. solution. So for example, cable and wireless, we have a major contract with cable and wireless to provide their only video solution in 38 countries. And that video solution isn't just a set top box to the television monitor in the home, but it's a portable capability to their PC and, and ultimately to their mobile phone. Got it. So they're excited about that. Um, and our product, unlike what I would call closed in, very expensive IPTV models. This is a very cost efficient way to deliver video, utilizing an existing can, network. Can you, j just for people, can you talk about these, uh, these buzzwords? W what is IPTV? What are you? What's the difference? So just imagine watching, you know, being able to use the internet to deliver television but not just video. So I think in, in, in the last several years, you know, I, I sort of go through this timeline when I'm talking to people and I say, you know, we started out in 2004, you know, some folks here in the Valley thought, we're just gonna put all the content on the internet and it's all gonna be free. And I said, you know, that doesn't work because content's gonna wanna get paid. And then we went through, everything's gonna be user generated, right? We went through what I call the YouTube phase. It's gonna be user generated content. Well, we also realized that model doesn't pay. I mean, it's a nifty model. People like watching things. It's, it's an adjunct too, but it's not the model that's going to make money. Um, and then we went through what I call the Hulu phase, which was, it's all going to be ad, ad supported, right? So we went from, we'd love to do everything for free, but that didn't work because content wouldn't give the rights. So of course, of course they wouldn't. You know, user generated content didn't work. And then advertising only models, we don't think necessarily are the right answer. So we believe that we're finally in this, the right place where content's saying they want to get paid. And we're trying to help figure out business models that work for 
content that work for our white label you know, B2B partners, whether that's telcos or MSOs or satellite. And we would love to um, you know, make it work obviously for us. So we think it, it can work for everybody when there's dollars to be had. You know, when you're in a model where no new revenue is coming in or only small amounts of new revenue relative to the viewership. You know, so if you take a Hulu, for example, yeah, they got tons of viewership, but compare their revenue line to a DirecTV or Comcast on equivalent views. It's a, for, for the same show. For the same, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's just no comparison. Yeah. So. Do, 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 well, let me ask this. In my mind, it seems unfair that advertisers are paying less for a million online eyeballs than they are for a million, you know, over the air or set top box eyeballs. Well, I think I think ultimately what you can prove, and we and we've done it at Move with what we've done with our our partners in the UK for TV4 and for the BBC, that when you do truly targeted advertising, that you can create much greater capability to generate revenue than the typical online generation. So for example, if we took, there, here's a national ad that's showing on a particular network, and we say we can target it down at the zip code and create just an ad for that zip code, or just an ad for you, for Peter, or just for me, Roxanne, because we know our specific demographic. That's what creates the opportunity to generate significant revenues. And I think advertisers have had a hard time trying to figure out how to really count you know, we've got companies that do that for a living, right? But, you know, how to really understand what truly the benefit is of an online ad versus, a, a you know, a, a generic uh, national ad. Well, so, so, so I guess my question there is where are we in terms of educating advertisers on the value of one thing versus the value of another thing? Well, I don't think you can just say it's online versus, you know, broadcast or whatever. I think what you have to say is, look, this is how this online ad is so much more valuable because I can target it down to the zip code. I can target it down to understanding whether I'm a male or female that, based on what other information that I have. Um, I think that's what will convince advertisers that this is worth way more than the typical So, so I guess my question is where, where are we in that process? Well, are, we, can, are, are we have the capability. Are they getting convinced? Are they still skeptical are they well two people there's there's several people have to be convinced right you have to have the content folks that are saying i want to go through what it takes i, I want to select all those different ads that i would pick for those different genres working with the advertisers i mean yeah. right because it's there's a process to insert an ad you know do i really want to go through the work that it takes to do all of those dynamic ad insertions depending on the you know the dynamics and selecting all the different ads that you would show on Desperate Housewives. Let's say there's 10 different ads. Do they want to do that? So they have to decide that. The advertisers have to decide that. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of work that has to go into it. And I think what we're trying to, to work on right now is to really we, we focus as much on everybody else's business model, quite frankly, as our own. Because we think it's such an exciting time. And if we push the ball forward in a big yeah. way, that we can be a big winner too, obviously. Well, and that's kind of what I was going to ask before while you were talking about kind of the, the different content models. It seems like you're almost consulting with a lot of companies as well and trying to, to push them in a direction and a vision of where you see the media landscape playing out in five years. We so, absolutely are. So, how, how is, <laughs> so you walk into, and I don't know if you can, maybe you can use a generic example of, I was talking to a company but could you give an example of maybe walking in someone's door who's a big, you don't have to name the player, but a pretty sizable media company and kind of educating them about where you see the media industry going and how they should position and be monetizing their content? Well, I'll use three specific media companies that I've wow, met okay. with in the last uh, five weeks. And all of them said they were all struggling with how do we really monetize online? and, and we, they're being told by the, the senior leaders, you are to go out and monetize your content online. <laughs> and Sweet. they're sort of sitting there going, okay, now what? You know, yeah. how do we do that? And I think what we're trying to do at Move is to say, look, you know, we, this is how we see it. I mean, we see a world where you have this huge ecosystem. You have $100, $100 billion of 
subscription revenue going into cable and satellite today, right? 100 billion bucks. Is that's that in the US money. market? In the US or? market okay. only, US market only. So that's a huge number, right? And we understand that you're trying to preserve, you're, you're trying to figure out, I only have this, I have this much revenue online and I have this much revenue over here. So how do I do that? Well, I think how you do that if, is that you step back and say, why are we approaching online and making it a different experience? Customers do want linear, they do want live, and they want the experience they get on the internet. Why aren't we doing it all in one place? That's what you do for a living, right? The content aggregators, that's what, uh, that's what a distribution partner does for a living. People love that experience when it, it's served up in, an, in a fun, user-friendly, aggregated capability. We think it can be even more special than what anybody's ever experienced online or ever experienced in their current capability all combined together. So who, who would be offering, offering those varied models to consumers? Like cur currently ESPN makes all that subscription revenue right. through Comcast plus Time Warner right. plus is Cablevision still around or <laughs> <laughs> yes, Cablevision they, yeah, and, yes, they are. And, and all these others. Um, would in kind of a new world, would would ESPN or CNN also have their own subscription service where people could get the live stream online and pay two bucks a month? Or I honestly don't see a disaggregation being the right answer. I personally think that it, that first of all, I think having the capability to have a fully aggregated, multiple channel, multiple VOD, social, you know social networking overlays all in one place is the right answer. Now, I could offer that over the top as a, an existing MSO in satellite, but they don't have the rights today. So, you know, we're trying to push everybody, we need to be working on these rights like now. Um, new entrants into the market can create a new, you know, discussion with the content folks about, a, about the capability to do the three screens. Um, so I think for us, we're saying to content, you have to move faster on getting these rights out there because that's what customers really so want. So dealing with these issues. We're trying to, yeah, we're dealing, we're yeah. actually trying to serve up all the issues and trying to get the issues on the table and to get all the entrants and all the different parties together into coming to a common vision. You know, obviously we have a vision which we think is really exciting and most people who see our product, the full end-to-end -end capability that we have, and that we're going to be delivering for cable and wireless. They get so excited about it, they're like, well, we thought this was two years away, or we thought this was three years away, and we thought, oh, we were going to have a trial in 18 to 24 months. And we're like, no, it's here right now. I mean, you can have a real serve, you can have a really exciting consumer proposition that I would pay for. And I've looked, I probably looked at 20 or 30 investments a year over the last three or four years. And nothing... In terms of companies you might acquire? Companies I might acquire, companies I wanted to invest in, companies that my clients were looking to invest in. And I said, you know, I never, I didn't see anything that got me excited. Uh, it, lots of different reasons. But I, we did invest in different companies, but not in this space. Why? Because people were all pitching ad models or they were pitching, you know, just a very limited capability. You know, I, my view is people don't want multiple boxes sitting over here. They don't. They don't want to have to plug in three different boxes to get all the different content. They'd love to have one place where they could have everything that the internet has to offer, everything that they love about their live linear opportunity that they have today, and everything that the internet provides on top of that from a social networking, et cetera. That's what people want. And they'd be willing to pay for it. And they'd be willing to okay. pay for it. So if I put my uh, best Ariana Huffington impression <laughs> on, I'd say, darling, you're so passe. Everything, content wants to be free. I want to free. Free, free is the new black or the new ubiquitous. Or and you know what I say to you? I would like a free car too. Yeah. Wouldn't a free car be great? But you know what the great, but the interesting part about her argument would be, the minute the content guys find a way to monetize, the free stuff goes because they have the ability to control it and they've only let out a certain amount of it and they're going to the minute they find a way to monetize it I'd do exactly the same thing I'd shut off the free and you know what I'd love to have a free car too but that isn't going to happen forever right so, so you see everybody kind of playing around and trying to figure things out right now and dealing with the rights issues and once a lot of this stuff gets resolved, they may finally be at the point where they say, we have a 
a clear path to a subscription model for our content. Consumers are gonna want it or they're actually showing that they want it. Now let's start cutting off the YouTube access to that show or right. the you know, so access we'll or whatever. I think that's exactly right. Because they're, you know, if you just compare the opportunity models, they can't continue to, to you don't want to make the pie smaller, which yeah. is what's happening at the moment. You have the potential to do that. We want to make the pie bigger. And how do we, at a minimum, we want to keep the, the pie as big as it is today. But I think we can make the pie bigger. Well, do you think general overall ad revenues are going to keep on expanding? So for the same thousand eyeballs, do you think they'll start to be valued more? Do you think just advertising revenues are going to be well, I think advertising such a blip? Re well, they're hard, they're hard right now because I think you know, we're obviously in a difficult environment. So this is a tough environment. I think it's going to continue for quite some time. That being said, I think there can be opportunities to get more value out of online eyeballs. There's no question about that in my mind through targeted ad, dynamic ad insertion and targeted, targeted advertising in a much more discreet way than what's been done in the past. That being said, that alone is not going to pay the bill. I mean, this industry works. It's a huge ecosystem. I mean, when you start adding in TV production and, you know, movie production and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's tens and hundreds of billions of dollars, and how do we pay for that? Or else the whole model breaks down. Sort of. That, that's almost for the entrenched players. But you have a lot of scrappy new players coming into the market who don't need to maybe be making billions of dollars or, or delivering, you know, year over year revenue growth that their investors will be happy with. So you, you almost have a couple so different give, so types give me of players an in the system. Of new players that are going to make it's going to be worth it for content to participate with and they're going to well and the new player is actually going to have an economic model that's going to work in the long term. Now, Not we, in we, the short term. But we, in the which long is term. true. So so they're going to have to, you know, to be sustainable, you have to make more money every year than it costs you to produce whatever you're making. Correct. Um, I don't know where some of these companies are going, but for example, you know, Jim Lauterbach from Revision 3 was sitting in the seat. His model is to push stuff out there for free, to rely on sponsorship revenue. Maybe Revision 3 grows into a 500 person company with $15 million of revenue. Would that make them incredibly happy? No, but would they be sustainable? Yes. Contrast that to NBC, which already has a huge infrastructure and lots of costs, and or a movie studio. So the scale is different, and success for me and five of my friends who want to be sustainable, how I would measure success would be very different than how um, you know, Disney would measure success. And I think that's fair. I mean, I think, I think what you have to be, and that's why I think you have to be open. So as I said before, you want the best of what the internet has to offer, which may have some free content that's generated by people who don't care, but it also has professionally generated content that people want that does cost serious money to make. I think people want it all. I want it all. Yeah. I mean, that's what I want. I want it all. I mean, I want everything. <laughs> and so when I said, you know, to, to our team, when I saw our product and I said, we can enable people to have it all. That's really the exciting part of where we are right now right, is to be able to do it all. And I want to take it with me. I want to take my computer with me and I want to be in New York City, you know, and I want my specific service that I want, but I want everything on it. I want to be able to take it anywhere I go. So and the internet, by the way, takes borders away. It's like we've yeah. said to our various content partners that we're working with. At the end of the day, the beauty of the internet, satellite has a footprint, although much more efficient than cable's footprint. Cable has a footprint, but the internet is really sort of boundless unless you're in China. Um, but it's boundless, right? I mean, we're able to go anywhere with our computers. It's all about business rules now. Where do you want to put the business rules around how you want that content? Do you want to go outside the United States or not or whatever? But those are business rules, it's not technology. The beauty of the yeah. internet, it takes all the technology barriers away. So, so I think, is ABC is one of your customers? Yes. So can you just walk me through kind of what they're doing right now in terms of Distributing content across platforms and well, I think they're trying a little bit internationally. I guess sure. I, I mean, I think you know, a ABC's doing it all. ABC.com's in and ABC. I mean, I think they're looking at every opportunity right now, and they're playing in all ponds, if you will. Um, I think that like every content content owner, 
they, like everyone else, would like to find a way to make that a much more sticky pond where they're really, you know, they're playing in a pond where they can actually make money. And so when they find that hit, I'm sure they'll spend much more of their resources and time toward that pond, you know, the one that actually yeah. generates real money versus the one where they're kind of keep going down the same path. So I think right now they're probably playing in lots of different arenas and trying lots of different things. And I'm sure they're hopeful like everyone else that you know, they will uh, find the one that actually is the holy grail, that they can actually get the golden pot at the end of the rainbow, <laughs> which we'd all like to have.